In a world increasingly concerned with the concept of the mark of the beast, often referenced from the book of Revelation, there is an important aspect of our spiritual walk that frequently goes unnoticed, the mark of God. So while many are preoccupied with the fears and speculations surrounding the mark associated with the beast, few realize that there is also a divine mark, one that signifies protection, belonging, and salvation. Today, I want to take you on a journey through the scriptures to explore both the mark of the beast and the mark of God. We will delve into their literal and symbolic meanings, understand their origins, and discern their implications for our lives. I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. My friends, imagine a world where every action, every choice is recorded and monitored, where your very identity is tied to a unique identifier, visible or invisible. In this world, your access to everyday necessities, your ability to buy or sell, hinges on whether or not you have this unique identifier. But this scenario, often perceived as a plot from a futuristic novel, is actually a reality described in the Bible concerning the end times. Revelation 13 verse 18 tells us, Here is wisdom. Let him who is understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. This verse not only presents a mystery that has captivated Bible scholars and believers for centuries, but also serves as a stark reminder of the profound spiritual realities underlying our physical world. It urges us to seek deeper understanding and discernment, recognizing that the struggles and conflicts we encounter are not merely of a physical nature, but are deeply rooted in the spiritual realm. As we navigate these profound truths, I invite you to open your hearts and minds to the revelations of God's Word and the Holy Spirit. Now, let us examine the mark of the beast as presented in the Bible. In Revelation 13, verses 16 to 17, the Bible vividly describes a mark that will become a crucial part of end times prophecy. The scripture says, He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell, except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. This passage depicts a time where society is divided based on who bears this mark. We see here that the mark is not only a physical sign, but it also represents economic control and social order. And notice that, according to the Bible, the mark will be placed on the most visible or accessible parts of the body, the hand and the forehead, indicating its public and unavoidable nature. The number 666, as revealed in Revelation 13 verse 18, adds to the mystery of the beast's mark. As the scripture reminds us, here is wisdom. Let him who is understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. The distinctiveness of this number has led to numerous interpretations, but its repeated association with the beast and his mark underscores its importance in end times prophecy. This number represents imperfection in stark contrast to the biblical number seven. In biblical symbolism, the number seven represents wholeness and completion, often linked to God's creative work and his perfect nature. Therefore, the number 666 falling short of seven signifies something fundamentally flawed and incomplete, directly contrasting with the divine order and perfection. 
But understand this, my friends. The mark of the beast isn't just a physical or economic symbol. It also represents a spiritual decision, a choice that aligns a person with the beast and against God. Revelation 14 verses 9 to 10 highlights the severity of accepting this mark. And it reads, Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Here we see that the choice to accept the mark is portrayed as an act of worship towards the beast, directly opposing God with dire spiritual consequences. The thought of receiving this mark, knowingly or unknowingly, has been a source of concern for many. Additionally, the possibility of manipulation or deception in influencing one's choice in this matter is an area of significant concern. However, this scripture emphasizes the mark as a conscious decision, a clear choice between following God or the beast. Revelation 14 verse 11 describes the eternal consequences for those who take the mark. It says, And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. This passage suggests that the act of receiving the mark is also intertwined with worship and allegiance, rather than being an involuntary or accidental act. Understanding the mark of the beast involves recognizing its multifaceted and varied nature. So it's not just a symbol of economic control or a physical identifier. It represents a deeper, spiritual allegiance. Certainly, this mark, in whatever form it takes, distinguishes those who choose the world's system over God's sovereignty. It serves as a clear dividing line between those who follow the beast and those who follow Christ. My friends, another thing that is clear is that the implications of accepting the mark of the beast are profound and far-reaching. It affects one's spiritual standing, eternal destiny, and relationship with God. The Bible's emphasis on this mark serves as both a warning and a call to wisdom. It encourages believers to be discerning, wise, and cautious, urging them not to accept everything at face value. It also calls for an understanding of the signs of the times and the importance of making choices that are in alignment with God's will. As we reflect on the mark of the beast, it's crucial to consider our own lives and choices. Are we allowing the values and systems of this world to mark our actions and thoughts? Are we making decisions that align us with God or with the beast system? The answers to these questions are critical as we navigate the intricacies and challenges of our faith in a changing world. The mark of the beast as described in Revelation is a powerful symbol of allegiance and identity. It challenges us to consider where our true loyalty lies, and it also invites us to choose God over the world. As we navigate the challenges of the end times, let us do so with wisdom, discernment, and hearts firmly aligned with God's truth. Remember, the choices we make today have eternal implications. May we choose wisely, guided by the Holy Spirit, and live in a manner that reflects our allegiance to God, rejecting the ways of the beast. Next, let us look closer at the seal of God. How do we get it? The seal of God, as presented in Scripture, is a profound symbol of divine ownership and protection. My friends, it's important to understand that the seal of God does not come from a church, pastor, bishop, or any other spiritual leader. In Ephesians 1 verse 13, the Apostle Paul provides a clear guide on how to ensure we have this seal. 
The scripture says, in him, you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. This passage lays out a simple yet profound process for receiving God's seal. Firstly, it begins with hearing the word of truth, the gospel of salvation. This involves an encounter with the message of Christ, his life, death, and resurrection. It is through this message that we understand our need for a savior and God's incredible love for us. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes, as stated in Romans 1 verse 16. To be sealed by God, we must first be exposed to and understand the truth of the gospel. Secondly, Believing in the gospel is crucial. This belief is not a mere intellectual agreement, but involves placing our trust and faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Belief in the gospel translates into a personal commitment, a surrender of one's life to Christ. This belief is more than just acknowledging the historical facts of Jesus' life and death. It's a heartfelt acceptance of his sacrifice on our behalf and a trust in his resurrection power. It's a belief that transforms, leading to a new life in Christ. Once we have heard and believed the gospel, Ephesians 1 verse 13 tells us that we are then sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The Holy Spirit is God's seal on our lives, a guarantee of our inheritance as God's children and a promise of our future redemption. This seal is a mark of authenticity and ownership. Just as a seal in ancient times signified ownership and protected the contents of a document, so does the Holy Spirit seal us as belonging to God, safeguarding us until the day of redemption. Having the seal of God, therefore, involves a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, initiated by hearing the gospel and cemented by our belief in it. This relationship is maintained and nurtured through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, who resides within us, empowering us to live in accordance with God's will. The Holy Spirit is not only a seal, but also a helper, guide, and comforter who helps us in our Christian walk, as stated in John 14, verse 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Living under the seal of God means living a life led by the Spirit it involves daily surrendering to the Holy Spirit's guidance, allowing Him to transform our character and actions to reflect Christ's. Galatians 5 verses 22 to 23 describe the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control these qualities are evidence of the Holy Spirit's work in our lives and a visible manifestation of God's seal. Furthermore, being sealed by God implies a call to holiness and obedience. Ephesians 4 verse 30 admonishes us not to grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom we were sealed for the day of redemption. My friends, our actions, words, and thoughts should honor God, reflecting the fact that we are His sealed and treasured possessions. The assurance of God's seal brings immense peace and confidence. Romans 8 verse 16 declares, The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. This inner witness of the Holy Spirit provides assurance of our salvation 
and status as God's children. It is a source of comfort, especially in times of doubt or struggle, reminding us of God's unfailing love and presence in our lives. In a world that often rejects spiritual truth and embraces secular values, bearing the seal of God is a mark of distinction. It sets us apart as representatives of God's kingdom. This distinction is not for our glory, but for the purpose of being light and salt in the world. As Jesus described in Matthew 5, verses 13 to 14, our lives, marked by the Holy Spirit, should draw others to Christ and reflect His transformative power. My friends, the seal of God is both a privilege and a responsibility. It is a privilege because it marks us as God's own, assures us of our salvation, and guarantees our eternal inheritance. It is a responsibility because it calls us to live in a manner worthy of the calling we have received, as Ephesians 4 verse 1 urges. Let us, therefore, embrace this seal with gratitude, live under its guidance with obedience, and reflect its reality in our lives with integrity and love. Let us commit to nurturing our relationship with Christ, being sensitive to the Holy Spirit's leading, and living in a way that honors the seal we have received. May our lives be a testimony of God's grace and a beacon of hope to those still seeking the truth. Now, let us turn our attention to the critical issue of choosing between the two marks. The choice between the mark of the beast and the seal of God is one of the most significant decisions we will ever make. It's a decision that goes beyond mere religious affiliation or belief. It's about where we place our ultimate allegiance and trust. This choice determines not just our earthly lives, but our eternal destiny. Understanding the importance of this decision is crucial. The mark of the beast, as we have seen, signifies allegiance to a system and leader opposed to God. Accepting this mark is not just a passive act. It's a deliberate choice to reject God and align with the forces of darkness. On the other hand, choosing the seal of God is a decision to accept God's sovereignty, to live under His authority, and to be marked as His own. Avoiding the mark of the beast requires more than just awareness. It demands active resistance and spiritual discernment. Believers must be vigilant, constantly evaluating our beliefs and actions against the truth of God's Word. This vigilance is not born out of fear, but out of a desire to remain faithful to God. It involves rejecting the values and systems that are in opposition to God's kingdom and embracing a lifestyle that reflects our commitment to Christ. Embracing the seal of God starts with a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It involves acknowledging our sin, accepting Christ's sacrifice on the cross, and committing our lives to Him. This decision is the beginning of a journey of faith marked by continual growth, obedience, and transformation. As believers, we are called to live in a way that is consistent with our new identity in Christ, allowing the Holy Spirit to shape our thoughts, actions, and desires. The choice between the two marks is not a one-time decision, but a daily commitment. Every day, we are faced with choices that either align us with God or the world, it's in our everyday actions, words, and thoughts that our true allegiance is revealed. Having the seal of God means consistently seeking to align our will with God's will, making choices that reflect His love, grace, and truth. This decision also involves a willingness to face opposition and persecution. In a world where the beast's influence is pervasive, Standing for Christ can be challenging, but as Romans 8 verse 37 reminds us, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. Additionally, we are comforted by the words of Matthew 5 verse 10, which says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This scripture 
reinforces the blessed assurance we have in enduring for the sake of righteousness and truth. The strength to overcome comes not from ourselves, but from Christ, who dwells within us. As bearers of God's seal, we have the assurance of His presence, guidance and protection, no matter what challenges we face. My friends, I invite you to reflect on these truths. Consider the choices you make each day. Are they leading you towards the mark of the beast or the seal of God? Remember, the decision you make has eternal consequences. Let this knowledge guide you towards choices that honor God, choices that lead you to a path of righteousness and eternal life. May your journey be marked by wisdom, strength, and grace. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, the Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth, I come before you with thanksgiving and adoration. I praise you, Lord, for you are holy, just, and merciful. Your majesty and glory are beyond understanding, and your love for us is immeasurable. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, deserving of all glory, honor, and praise. Thank you, Lord, for your countless blessings in my life and the lives of my loved ones. Thank you for your grace that sustains me, your mercy that forgives me, and your love that surrounds me. I am grateful for the gift of salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ, and for the presence of your Holy Spirit in my life. Lord, I ask for your forgiveness for my sins, both known and unknown. Forgive me for the times I have not reflected your love and grace. In the same spirit, I release forgiveness to those who have wronged me, letting go of all bitterness and resentment. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for wisdom and discernment to recognize the spiritual realities of our times. Help me to distinguish between the fleeting pleasures of this world and the eternal truths of your kingdom. I pray for the courage and strength to resist the mark of the beast and all its manifestations. Lord, help me to be vigilant, always aware of the enemy's schemes. I declare in the name of Jesus that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I rebuke every plan of the enemy to lead me astray or to bring harm or deception into my life. I bind every spirit of confusion, worry, anxiety, and fear in the name of Jesus. I pray for your blessings of peace, joy, and righteousness to overflow in my life and upon my loved ones. Lord, I ask for your healing touch upon us. Heal our bodies, minds, and spirits. Protect us from physical, emotional, and spiritual harm. Guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. I pray for your provision and guidance in every aspect of our lives. Lord, as I say this prayer, together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We come in agreement as we pray for each other. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Seal us with your divine mark and lead us in your ways. Help us to live lives that honor you, to be lights in this world, pointing others to your truth and love. Together, we claim victory over the enemy in your mighty name. 
We declare healing and restoration for those among us who are broken and hurting. We give thanks for your unfailing protection and provision. Lord, guide us by your Holy Spirit that we may walk in your ways and fulfill your purpose for our lives. Empower us to stand firm against the deceptions and temptations of this world. Help us to live as faithful witnesses of your kingdom, marked by your love and grace. May our lives reflect the beauty of your holiness and the joy of your salvation. In every challenge, let us see your hand at work, strengthening and refining us. Lord, protect us from deception and empower us to stand firm in our faith, even in the face of opposition. Let your will be done in our lives and the lives of our loved ones as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, Amen. If you were blessed by this message, type the word Amen in the comment section below. I declare that all the blessings of this prayer are now upon you, in the name of Jesus. You can help us to reach more persons and spread the gospel. You can do this by sharing the video with a friend or family member who you know needs the blessing of this prayer and by clicking the like button. Also remember to subscribe to our daily Jesus devotional channel for more videos that will bless your heart and uplift your spirit. We appreciate all those who support us. You're blessed to be a blessing. Now, for those who are listening and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to receive God's grace with an open and repentant heart. Start where you are. Your past doesn't matter. Jesus came to seek and to save those that are lost. God loves you. It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but for all to come to repentance. Say this simple salvation prayer for yourself. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer, I pray. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now that you have prayed this prayer, you can ask a pastor to baptize you at a local church and make that decision public. Baptism is a symbol of that decision to follow Jesus. I then encourage you to have fellowship with other believers, to learn more about your new life, and to get to know more about God. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comment section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. Also, we invite other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world to join us and start praying for you right now. And we want you to know that even if you don't see a reply to your prayer request, it doesn't mean that you were not prayed for. Rest assured that we are actively lifting up each request to God that is in accordance with His will. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance in accordance with God's perfect plan. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.